Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we've got a little um, kicking off Sew My Style month um, for May this month which is uh, shirts like actual button up shirts um, and I'm one of the leaders for this month. So I am taking over we've got two patterns for this month. The first one is the Shona shirt slash shirt dress and I will pop a picture up here and I actually made that um, I'll pop a link up to that video. I made that in my most recent uh, module that I just did. And then our second pattern for the month is the Novelista, I'll pop that up, <laughs> picture, uh, by Blank Slate Patterns. And that is the shirt I'm going to be focusing my attention on this month. Um, we've got wonderful um, other leader and hosts for this month. Our other leader is um, Eowyn from Sew La Joupe. And um, then our hosts are Jess from Coral and Bunny and um my mind just went blank and claire from bell citadel sorry claire <laughs> my my brain just totally went blank uh so that is the yeah, there are two hosts so we've got a very fun filled month ahead i have some tutorials coming at you guys this month for shirt making i have a tutorial on how to install a um collar and collar stand into a shirt and I have a tutorial on how to use bias tape for um, kind of a bias hem facing on shirt tail hems. And then I think I'm also going to do, I was looking at the pattern and I was just going to do those two tutorials, but um, I've had some requests for how I do full bicep adjustments on my patterns because I, I have larger upper arms and I frequently have to do full bicep adjustments on patterns. And as I was looking through um, this Novelista pattern, I noticed that first of all, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in just a second, that she was talking about those adjustments. So I thought I might actually do that tutorial as well, just because I've had a few people ask for it anyway. And sometimes it's a little easier to see it done um, if you're a visual learner, as opposed to just seeing pictures and reading about it. So that's kind of the plan. <laughs> and then of course, a reveal um, of my shirts at the end of the month. So today, um, again, I'm really focusing on the Novelista this month, and today I wanted to talk about gathering your supplies and picking fabric for your button-down or button-up shirt. I think I read somewhere that there's a difference between a button-up shirt and a button-down shirt. In fact, maybe it was Meg, um, who's kind of in charge of the Sew My Style, had posted a little fun fact. But anyway, whatever. <laughs> um, so let's talk about fabric. We're going to talk about the fabric first, and then about interfacing, and then um, the only other thing you need are buttons, and we'll kind of talk about that as well. Okay, so the Novelista shirt has two versions. It has like your traditional um, but button-up shirt that um, with princess seams. This one has princess seams and options for uh, breast pockets, and um, I think it's princess seamed in the front and the back for version one. Version two has this really cool, it's got the yoke, and then it's got a really cool crossover back. Um, and then a shorter sleeve. So if you didn't want to do an actual um, cuff placket, all of that on a sleeve, it's got a little shorter sleeve option um, that's really beautiful. So again, all of this, she lists very detailed um, fabrics that she recommends for her pattern, Melissa, who is uh, Blank Slate Patterns. And I definitely, um, obviously recommend looking at the pattern, but I think that they're, in my opinion, so these are all my opinion, like what I prefer when I'm sewing a button-up shirt and what I kind of look for and different fabrics I choose depending on the style that I actually want to make. Um, I would just like to say also, I love a button-up shirt. I find them to be, if they fit properly, universally flattering on everyone. They create a nice V, um, I think they also look good if you have the right body type to be buttoned all the way up to the top. If you have a little bit more of a, um, oh, a gamine type figure, you know, you're a little bit more, a little straighter, a little, um, I don't want to say boyish figure. I think that's because no, you're a woman. Um, but you know, just a little straighter, a little more petite. I think I love that look when it's buttoned all the way up to the top. Um, but then if you have, if you may be a little bustier, I think I love the look of it open, um, unbuttoned and opened to create that V effect. I love the sleeves rolled up. You could wear it as a, a topper. Um, you can tie them really cute. You can tuck them in. You can leave them out. There's just I just find them very versatile. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some fabric choices, and I'll show you what I'm thinking. I can't decide if I'm going to do one or two of these. So um, 
I'm also thinking about doing a third module uh, for my this blue and white and yellow collection that I've done. And I'm wearing modules one and two right now through Me Made May, and this is one of the pieces. Um, but I was thinking about doing a third module, because I was playing around with that at the beginning, if I wanted to do just one, or just two modules, or if I wanted to add a third. And I think I've just got enough stuff in my current closet, I'm really not going to have to make hardly or very much of anything, um, that I could put together for a third module. And I thought it might be kind of interesting if I literally talked you through the process on how I put that together, from selecting patterns, why I select patterns, how I pick color schemes, um, how I pick which um, like silhouettes I want to go with for my uh, modules. Um, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave a link up. Um, I might be running out of cards. I don't know. But <laughs> if I can, I'll put um, a link up here to my module one and my module two uh, plans, and then you can go from there to find the lookbooks. Um, but yes, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking that this novelista is going to go maybe into that third module a little bit. So I've been kind of looking around at fabrics in my uh, current wardrobe, and at first I thought, and I might still, but I kind of was looking at her second view, and hopefully I'm popping pictures up here of the different views, but the second view has this neat crossover uh, back. Now, in my opinion, that shirt needs to be uh, in a really drapey, floaty fabric. So um, just in order, if it's in a cotton or... Um, so I think she even has quilting cotton on there, which for a structured blouse is fine. Um, I find quilting cottons to be a little thick and not the most comfortable to wear, but you know, if you like it, that's fine. Um, but she does have cottons on there, and I think that for that kind of a application, something drapier might be a little better. So something along the lines of a silk. I'm not going to unroll this, but this is a silk... Uh, Silk Charmeuse. So it's shiny on one side, and I've actually washed it. That's why it's so wrinkly. So you can't even really see the sheen. I love to wash my Silk Charmeuse because then it gives the feel of wash silk, and it makes it not as shiny. And I actually wash and dry my Silk Charmeuse in a dryer before I sew with it. Once it's been made into a garment, I wash it on gentle in the washing machine and then let it air dry. Um, then I'll hit it with iron or a steamer. But for the fabric, I will wash it and put it in the dryer because it changes the hand a little bit, and I... I find it easier to care for. But anyway, I think for that second view, um, a drapier fabrics. So anything like a silk charmeuse, um, or if you didn't want to go that luxe, even just a rayon chalet, which I have here. I'm trying to keep all of my stuff. Just something with a lot of drape. So this is a gorgeous rayon chalet. And this was kind of this is Smuggler's Daughter, and I kind of um, thought about using this for a dress, and I might still. But um, it would make a really cool shirt, too. So yeah, something with a lot of drape in there would be beautiful for that crossover back. And again, it's with all patterns. You know, you could put long sleeves on it with the crossover back. You don't have to do the short sleeves. Um, you can kind of hack the sleeves however you want, really. So that's what I wanted to talk about, just for that view in particular. I think something with a little more drape, some of her drapier suggestions, um, would be better for that view. I also want to talk about a little bit, in her pattern, I was looking through it a little bit, and I could be wrong, but looking at her sizing chart, I think she drafts for a C cup. So she has your high bust measurement and then your full bust measurement on her sizing chart, which is genius. I wish all pattern companies did this um, if they don't, because she doesn't have, actually offer cup sizes um, different. The Sedona does. This one doesn't, but um, it's a princess-themed shirt, like I previously mentioned, and she does even walks you through in the pattern how to do an FBA on a princess seam if you still need it. Um, but she gives the high bust measurement, and um, it's a looser, I mean, it's a button-up, so it's not extremely fitted, although the princess seams do give you that option of making it a little more fitted um, through the body, especially if you're doing the regular back. Um, but she does talk to you through how to do the FBA on that, but she has, um, there's a difference of three inches between the measurement she gives for your upper bust and the measurement for the full bust. And she recommends that you size up. So, for instance, a large, the high bust measurement is a 37. My high bust measurement's a 36, but the medium high bust measurement is a 34. So I would sew the large because she says that number is the largest size that should fit into the pattern. Um, the way it's been drafted. So I would sew a large, and that gives me a bust measurement of 40 inches. 
um, just for the size chart that's not finished measurements and um, my bust measurements only 39 so um, which makes sense because it's a three inch difference but it'll give a little bit looser fit so I'm gonna be making the large in this one and I just love that she's done that it makes especially if you're busty you're fitting it super easily super easy sorry <laughs> Okay, so for the version one, which is just your real run-of-the-mill um, button-up shirt, it's got the princess seams, optional um, breast pockets, which I never use because I just don't like having anything extra on my boobs. <laughs> anything to diminish. Uh, but one of the patterns suggest or the fabric suggestions she had put on <clears throat> is seersucker. I love seersucker, especially in the summer. So I'm from Missouri originally, and even though that's technically not a southern state, if you get into the southern part of Missouri, it definitely... Um, takes on more uh, southern, you get into southern Missouri, you're really close to Tennessee, you're really close to Kentucky and Arkansas um, on that side, on the southeast side. And so there's definitely southern influence when you get into southern Missouri. And I have a lot of family in that area. So seersucker and that kind of stuff I grew up with very much so. I'm from the central part of the state, but yeah, you can definitely, there's definitely influence. So this is just a blue and white, very um, um, standard seersucker, uh, and I think I'm going to use, I think I've got enough, but I'm going to use, seersucker is cotton, and it, the stripe is not what makes it seersucker. What makes it seersucker is the bubbly uh, texture in the fabric. So if you've ever seen seersucker, I don't know if I can... If you can kind of see, it looks almost wrink. well, it does have wrinkles in it, but the actual, like, fine detail there um, kind of looks wrinkly. That is the nature of seersucker. And it's cotton. Um, I mean, I think you can probably get cotton polyester blends, but this is 100% cotton that I've got here. It's super breathable for the summer, and it's just very classic uh, fabric. And like I've mentioned before, my body type, my kibby body type is soft classic, so I love to use um, classic materials quite a bit. Classic prints, classic fabric, fabrications, that kind of thing. Um, so I think I'm going to make my um, just a regular button down in this seersucker. And with the stripes, it kind of gives you a lot of fun to play around with. So there's that. Another option that you could look for is um, Oxford, um, Oxford cotton or Oxford cloth. And that is going to be, again, these are wrinkly, sorry. I've washed these and they're all cotton, so they're just all um, wrinkly. It's just your standard, like, men's, not dress shirt, but a men's sport shirt, you know? So a button-up that a man might wear, um, not with a tie, like open-necked. Um, so it's the little bit thicker cotton, but creates a great structured button-up. And I, or button-down, I'll probably just call it a button-up. Um, it makes a very nice structured classic piece as well. Um, and this is definitely a contender for me as well. So um, I think with those princess seams, being able to get a nice, close, a little bit more tailored fit. But yeah, anything that's, really anything that's cotton, labeled cotton shirting, um, Oxford cloth is definite. Um, again, seersucker, you could use cotton, quilt, quilting cotton, although I find that to be a little thick, again, like I said. Uh, but another recommendation she had was cotton lawn, and I love a button down in cotton lawn. So this is a Liberty of London Tana Lawn print, which, um, of course, feels like heaven. <laughs> so you have that. What I love about the Tana Lawn is that when you wash it, and um, I don't dry it. I wash it and dry it when I first get it. But then once it's been made into a garment, I do not dry it. I let it air dry. But you hardly need to hit it with an iron because it is so tightly woven, it does not wrinkle hardly at all. Um, maybe if you're super particular about your clothes being wrinkle free but it it really comes out of you know air dries pretty pretty nicely but cotton lawn is nice and thin nice and thin um and just makes a really nice breathable cotton shirt again you could possibly use this for the drapier back um but it's going to have more body than a chalet not as much weight to it uh, so it's not going to give the drape quite as much, but you could, you could use it for that, depending on, again, I have a broad back, so I really don't want to create any more width in my back than I need to. So if I'm going to do that crossover back, I'm going to use something that's very drapey and heavy, like a rayon or a silk. Something that's got weight to it a little bit. But yes, cotton lawn is one of her suggested um, fabrics, and again, for summer, um, or even if you're going in, if you're in the southern hemisphere and going into winter, 
cotton lawn can be layered really easily because it is nice and thin. If you want to throw a, a sweater on over it or a cardigan, it layers very, very easily. And it's cotton, so it's got natural properties that will help with um, both keeping you cool and hot or and warm, depending on um, what climate you're in. All right, and then my final fabric I have here is a linen. And um, again, I mentioned that I've already made the Sedona and I made it in a linen. And when I'm using really structured fabrics like that, this is another linen. This is from Smuggler's Daughter and this also could become a novelista. I, uh, clearly I haven't made up my mind yet what I'm gonna do. Um, but a linen, nice structured linen. I think this is, see now that I'm saying that, this may be a cotton, but it's a very coarse cotton which would act just like a linen. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure on the fabrication of this. But any kind of linen, uh, like my Sedona, I always like that in a very um, tailored manner. So in my Sedona, for instance, there's an option for back darts and front darts. I would always sew the back and front darts in that shirt so it doesn't get too boxy on me. Again, personal preference. If you want something that's boxy, cotton and linen can definitely add to that and make it more boxy. So it just kind of depends on what you're wanting out of your finished garment. I have a large chest. I think anything that's too boxy stands off my body too much. Um, so I like things to be taken in and fitted a little bit more. I find it more flattering on my figure. Uh, but linen, of course, definitely a wonderful, wonderful choice for, um, especially for a summertime um, shirt. Okay, so that's fabric for your shirt. Now let's talk about interfacing. And I've mentioned it many times before, but not all interfacing is created equal. And I have here, I'm going to throw this stuff on the floor. Okay, I have here two different um, interfacings. So this would be dependent on the fabric that you're going to use. Try not to dump that. But for my cottons, especially my heavier weight stuff, so um, like a heavier linen, a little bit thicker weight cotton, um, maybe even the seersucker, maybe even the seersucker is a little bit lighter. I would use an actual shirting interfacing. And typically, I will leave a link down below. Um, this comes from Fashion 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 Sewing Supply. Fashion Sewing Supply? It's the interfacing people. Unfortunately, they do not ship outside of the US, which is real unfortunate. But um, they do have really nice <laughs> shirting um, interfacing. But if you don't live in the US and you're looking for good stuff, what you want is something that looks like white cotton on one side. Um, so it's backed with like a white cotton fabric on one side and then your glue is on the other side. That's perfect for collars and um, cuffs and plackets. Now you can buy different weights. So depending on if you want a super stiff collar, if you want something a little thinner, clearly the thicker the interfacing, the um, more structured your collar and stuff's gonna be. So with that being said, if you are using a drapier fabric, and I'm not sure, Palmer Pletch may have a shirting um, interfacing as well. Um, I'm not sure, I haven't used it. But this one is a Palmer Pletch, and this one I've used for some of the lighter weight applications and some of my blazers. But this is the Perfect Fuse Sheer, and it is it does not have the cotton back. It is just a really thin, sheer <laughs> almost trico ish but it doesn't have any stretch but just really really light now this is wonderful for your cotton lawns for um, any silk that you might be using or for your rayon where it'll give just a little bit of structure to your collar without it looking like super structured collar and then real drapey everywhere else because you don't want that well, I, if you wanted that, then by all means, go ahead. But typically you want your collars to be stiffer and to have more structure, but without it being stark contrast between your collar and the body of your shirt. So I would definitely use something like this on, like I said, my silks, my rayons, anything that's, or even my cotton lawns, things that are a little more um, lighter. Um, so yeah, matching your fabric to your interfacing, yes. And again, I will put links down um, to the interfacing, these two interfacings down below, and I'll see if Palmer Pletch does have um, something a little more like the, the with the cotton backing, the shirting. Um, and I'll leave uh, my Palmer Pletch dealer, Evelyn's email down below, if you are interested and can't find, um, you know, she's a dealer, so she sells this to, to people in classes and that kind of thing, and she might be able to, oops, sorry about the phone, that made me jump, did you see that? <laughs> 
<laughs> Why am I so jumpy? Sorry about that. Hold on. Okay. Sorry about that interruption and me like shooting out of my chair when the phone rings. It's, I don't know, up really loud. All right. So that's interfacing for your shirt. So then the final thing that you need for your button downs, button ups, whatever you want to call them, are buttons. My absolute favorite, I'm going to leave a link down below. If you do a lot of shirts, especially the Sedona actually has a um, button, pla like a, a hidden button placket, so it's covered so you can't even see the buttons. Um, and these are the buttons that I used. But these are just, uh, oh, I grabbed the sleeve ones. Um, I have them in different sizes. These are just clear shirt buttons. And they're kind of thick, so they go through your fabric really well. But you can buy them by the gross, which is 144. It's a dozen of a dozen um, at wawack.com. And I will leave a link down to these b below. So you can buy the shirt size buttons. And if you want to do the smaller ones, which I've got in the other drawer, um, for the cuffs, you can do that as well. Or if you like to do little buttons to button your um, shirt collar down uh, and use the smaller buttons, you can basically buy the same buttons really easily and really inexpensively. Um, at Wawak. I mean, again, if you're not making a lot of shirts, 144 buttons might be a little overkill, but I make shirts for my husband and myself, and a lot of times, even if I'm using a fun fabric, I just want the fabric to sing. Um, so those are nice and inconspicuous, but I also love, you know, just like at your Joann's, if you wanted a bigger button, and I think big buttons are kind of coming into their own this season to have like a, a larger button and I love anything that like the mimic of the tortoise shell I just think that they're just very classic and you can't go wrong with those either actually this on that Oxford cloth would just be gorgeous um, and you can get these at Wawak too so I'll leave links down to those below so I think that wraps up everything about collecting your notions and picking fabric for your shirts um, if there are any questions definitely leave them down below I will address them as I go, and uh, yes, you'll definitely be having the two tutorials that I mentioned about the bias tape for the hem facing that makes hemming a shirt tail hem so much easier, um, how to install the collar and collar stand. I have a couple of um, little tricks that just make it a little quicker without having to do any hand sewing. And then, um, yeah, if you guys are interested in, I mean, it would make sense to do the full bicep adjustment video now uh, because it, that may legitimately be a garment that you would need that because you don't want to, you know, when things are too tight in the arms, it makes things too tight in the back. So loosening that arm up, all of a sudden you've got movement again. Um, so anyway, those three tutorials will be coming to you. And if you are not signed up for Sew My Style, I will leave the link down for that below and it's free. You literally are signing up to receive emails, which are the discount codes. And then you can choose to participate if you'd like to that month and then be in the drawing for both the mid-month prize and the end of the month prize which are just both randomly, random um, picks. And then, um, yeah, and then you get some great patterns. And you can join the Facebook group where you just get a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of great people that are over there. Um, and then you can also follow them on, um, there is a Sew My Style account on Face or on Instagram that you can follow and also the hashtag that you could follow. So I will leave all that information down below. And uh, yeah, we will be doing shirt stuff kind of the rest of the month on Friday, I will have my, um, we'll be going back and forth between this and modules a little bit, but on Friday I've got my refashioning video coming to you on how I refashioned the men's thrifted jeans into my dawn jeans and also um, what I did to my thrifted blazer to make it more me. So I've got that coming on Friday and then next Tuesday I think I'm going to delve more into um, this module three but kind of showing you literally step by step, like a video on how I choose the color story and fabrics, a video on how I pick patterns and silhouettes. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then, <laughs> you know, how I pull things out of my closet, maybe a little bit to incorporate into modules. So I don't have to make all six pieces um, and kind of how I think about different silhouettes and how those go together within the different modules, especially if I'm doing multiple modules that are meant to go together. So if that sounds interesting, let me know, because I'm kind of thinking about that, um, kind of starting a little series there um, starting next week. Um, so I've also unearthed a lot of pattern companies now that a lot of them are going, which is fantastic, going to more inclusive sizing. Um, there's also a lot of pattern companies that are starting to do multiple, um, multiple cup sizes, which is like, ah, have it like nectar the holy heavens to my ear um 
that just makes my life so much easier and I'm sure a lot of other people when you don't have to do a full bust or a small bust adjustment because a lot of them even go down to an A cup which would be a small bust adjustment from the typical um, blocks that they're drafting their patterns off of it. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> That's what you have to look forward to. Don't forget, we're still in the giveaway for the Smuggler's Daughter gift card. I will leave, um, well, I'll pop a link up to that video up here on how you sign up for that giveaway. And you can still get 30% off at Smuggler's Daughter, and I will put the uh, her website down below and also the um, Tomcat discount code for that 30% off. And that's good through the end of May. But you could definitely use that 30% off for um, fabric for a shirt. And um, also, where was I going with that? Where was I going with that? Hmm. I had a flickering idea. God, does that happen to anyone else? Anyway, <laughs> you could use that 30, oh, shipping. She has free shipping if you spend over 100 within the United States, and then she does ship internationally. It's just net, you know, standard international rates apply to that shipping. So that's what I was going to say. Oh my word, I need to go lay down and take a nap or something. <laughs> okay, so that's all I have for today. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys on Friday. Bye. Bye.